A run would win it. The Woo Sox hoping to walk it off for the first time at their new home. One to one, bottom nine, and they'll have to deal with the heart throwing right hander, Yancy Diaz. Mike, this was one of the pieces that the Mets got back from the Blue Jays in exchange for Steven Matz this last offseason. Yeah, Steven Matz was really struggling in New York, but he has done good things with Toronto. Now, there's a history of the Mets and Toronto making big deals. That's where Noah Syndergaard came from. He was once in the Blue Jays system. So they've made deals before. Diaz fastball, changeup, curveball. We saw him there during this series when he went a perfect inning on the 12th. And that was strikeout. That was the one win that Syracuse had over the first three games, and Diaz was the setup man in the eighth inning that night. Tonight, trying to send us into extras. Gettys. Then Lopez and Akami, six, seven, eight in the order due up, starting with the power hitting Michael Geddes. Be a pretty good time. I'm sure Michael's thinking to connect on his first Red Sox career home run. Be a nice way to send us to fireworks. 0 for 3 in the game. Robbed in right field as last time. So many swings and misses on those breaking balls from all four right-handed pitchers that Syracuse has thrown tonight. And a combined 15 strikeouts in the first eight innings by Mets pitching. Yeah, we've seen that pitch the same shape from all those guys. You're right. Different arms, but similar repertoire, similar way that they've done it. Now up the ladder, I think he went. Yes, he did, and that is strikeout number 16 for Syracuse. That's how Yancy Diaz begins his outing. Yeah, changing the eye level of the hitter, and when you throw 95 after some sliders. Good call, Josh. You knew it the whole time. I mean, home plate umpire Jacob Metz was just asking to be totally sure, but he probably had a pretty good idea, too. I think in this late in the game like this, it's the right thing to do. So Jack Lopez coming to the plate. He's got an offer tonight, which has been rare for him in the hot couple of weeks he's had to start the season. I don't know why would you wouldn't just keep throwing that pitch over yeah. and over no matter who the pitcher is. You can execute it the way they have. A lot of swings and misses on that slider. There's a take. One ball, one strike. We have not had an extra inning game yet at Polar Park. Is this about to be the first? If it is, that man, Seth Blair, former long time ago St. Louis Cardinals first round pick would come in. But Jack Lopez has delivered a hit to give the Woo Sox a threat here in the home ninth first. That was just out of the reach of the diving first baseman Thompson. First hit since this guy, Josh Ockamy, singled in the fourth. And the winning run on. And a good base runner, too, which is obviously what you want in this spot. It's a beautiful swing by, by Jack Lopez on a fastball, kind of inside out of the ground ball. One more look. Late in the game like that, excellent swing. So now Josh Ockamy. Well, we know that Josh Ockamy can turn around velocity, especially from right-handed pitchers, although the two homers he's hit this week, they've been against southpaws. And one was on a breaking ball. They hold on Lopez at first. He represents the winning run. Got a fastball and hit it back. One and one the count on Akami. Tomorrow it's going to be the Woo Sox and Mets game five. We're not going to have live coverage for you, unfortunately. But you can catch us on tape delay here on Nesson Plus, 10 p.m. tomorrow. It's a big Boston sports day on Saturday with the Red Sox taking on the Angels and then the Bruins. Yes. Starting their Stanley Cup first round playoff series. So if you want to watch us, at least well, if you want to watch us on your linear television, you wait till 10. But you can always find us earlier online, MILB sure. TV.
We'll be on radio tomorrow. Looking forward to that. We'll, we'll jump over to the older medium. No suits tomorrow? No, you wear a t-shirt. <laughs> Flip-flops. The 1-1 one -one to Akami. Doing one. Well, Diaz doesn't quite have the fastball that the Vizcaino had. Philly McMillan. Yeah, that's a hit and run count. You know, Mike, I'm wondering, would you do it? You might. Especially because if he pulls the ball down the right field line in this park, it's tough to score from first because it's not that far. As you said, Lopez a good base runner. Yancy Diaz, the pitcher, was wondering. There's also a massive hole on the left side of the infield for Akami. It's an overshift and then some, and he's been used to seeing those pretty much his whole minor league career. He can get a ground ball double down the line here. I mean, Absolutely. A, a slow ground ball. You could also bunt, and you'd have an easy hit if you got it fair. I'm not saying he should. I'm just saying he could. I mean, look at that. There is literally nobody at third base. There's nobody at shortstop. This came up a few years ago when the shift first started happening. People were saying, well, in the playoffs, will hitters start bunting? And they didn't. And the thought for the hitter is, well, I'm not going to change what I do best. And for Akami, it's hit for power. I'm not going to change this because of what the defense does. Runner didn't go. Oh, and Akami took a big cut. See, this is that defense. Look how far the third baseman Drury is towards second base. He's basically playing shortstop. Now, it's weird, too, with the shift, these infielders. They're essentially playing different positions where the shortstop is playing second base a lot. Right, that's Bohannik, the shortstop, standing where a second baseman almost always otherwise normally would. Two and two. Strike three, runner going, and it will be a steal for Jack Lopez. Nobody was covering third. If Lopez wanted to, he could have kept running potentially. That's why you just saw the man who took that throw. Bohannik pointing towards third base. Yeah. Two out in the inning, though, Mike. But you have that winning run in scoring position. The 17th Syracuse strikeout tonight. Jet Bandy has a chance to be the hero in the first game he's ever started inside the Red Sox organization. And with, of course, that being the winning run at second base, the left fielder Ferguson has come in a bit more just because it's so deep out there. He wants to make a play at the plate on a potential base hit. And he has been on base twice tonight, a hit and a walk. Right down Broadway. Two out. Bottom nine in a tie game at Polar Park. To the backstop, and now the winning run will move to third as that one landed a good four, if not five feet, in front of home plate. That'll be the third wild pitch tonight against the Syracuse pitching staff. And Maxwell really had no chance on this. Now, this was a big time wild pitch by Diaz. He just spiked that right in the ground. I mean, no chance. If he does that again, that could be a way this game comes to an end. How'd you like that for the first walk off ever? Foul straight back by Bandy on the fastball. So now one and two. Duran is on deck. He'd love a chance. He'd also love it if Jed Bandy ended the game right here and he didn't need to get a chance. Diaz hopes to strike out the side. You know, that's not close to a strike, but I will say that's a very good take. If for no other reason than so many hitters we've seen chasing those high fastballs recently. And that's what Diaz had in mind, trying to get Bandy on a pitcher's count. 
That's the climb the ladder fastball. Would he dare throw a breaking ball in this spot with a runner at third? And you wonder the last one he threw, he spiked. 2 2. High in the air in the left. Looks like it's playable for Ferguson over towards the line. Ferguson continues his adventures, but makes the catch in the end that sends us to extra innings. The winning run stranded at third. Automatic runner to second.